Hello and welcome again to my series of biology lectures. So today we'll be focusing on cell signalling and thank you very much for tuning in today. It's, I hope you've enjoyed the previous lessons on DNA mutations, transcription, translation, etc. and how to write essays and exam tips, etc. So let's begin. So firstly, let's focus on what is cell signalling. So cell signalling is the process by which cells communicate with other cells within their body or within the external environment. This can happen via either direct contact by releasing certain substances which are taken up by other cells. This is a very important factor in life and the cells receive signals and they can respond to the extracellular environment which allows growth, development and immunity. This can occur via various pathways because multicellular organisms require cell signaling to allow different functions. To give an example, nerve cells can coordinate with muscle cells to help in body movement. So cell signaling can be either intercellular as well as it's as well as intracellular. So intracellular signals are produced by the same cells that receive the signals. In comparison, intercellular signals travel throughout the body. This permits specific glands to produce signals that act on different tissues. So let's look at the type of cell signaling molecules we have. We have five types. We have intercline ligands, autocrine ligands, juxtacrine ligands, paracrine ligands, and endocrine ligands. So intercrine ligands, these are produced by the target cell and bind to the receptor within the cell. The autocrine ligands, they function internally and on other cell target cells, for example, immune cells. The juxtacline ligand, these trans target the adjacent cells, cells that are next to one another. The paracrine ligands, these target the cells in the vicinity of the original cells, such as neurotransmitters. And endocrine ligands, these produce hormones. So looking at this slide, you can see that, that cell signaling can be defined by a distance between cells. So you have a direct intercellular, intercellular signaling, the contact dependent signaling, the autocrine signaling, the paracrine signaling, and the endocrine signaling. So cell signaling pathways can be either mechanical or biochemical. This is categorized based on the distance it must travel. Given an example, hydrophobic ligands, which include steroids and vitamin D3, they can move across the plasma membrane via diffusion of target cells and bind to intercellular cells. Now, if you look at hydrophilic ligands, these bind to the receptors on the surface of the cell and are amino acid derived. This permits the signal to pass through the aqueous environment of our body without any assistance. There are different types of cell signaling, which include paracrine signaling, autocrine signaling, endocrine signaling, and direct contact. So let's look individually at the type of cell signaling. So autocrine signaling, this involves a cell secreting a hormone or chemical messenger known as an autocrine agent, which binds to autocrine receptors on that same cell, which leads to a change in the cell itself. Then you have endocrine signaling, which are also known as hormonal. So endocrine signals are known as hormones. So these hormones are produced by endocrine cells and they travel through the blood to reach all parts of the body. The specificity of this signaling can be controlled if only some cells can respond to a particular hormone. So this involves the release of hormones by internal glands of an organism directly into the circulatory system, which regulates distant target organs. So that's the first two, autocrine signaling and endocrine signaling. Now looking at paracrine signaling, in this, a cell produces a signal to stimulate changes in nearby cells, which changes the behaviour of those cells. These signaling molecules, which are known as paracrine factors, can move over a short distance via diffusion. And these cells, which produce paracrine factors, secrete them into the immediate extracellular environment. These factors can then travel to nearby cells in which the gradient of factor received determines the outcome. So therefore, the exact distance that paracrine factors can travel is not certain. So looking at intercrine signaling, 
The signaling chemicals are produced inside the cell and bind to cytosolic or nuclear receptors without being secreted from the cell. These signals are relayed without being secreted from the cell. The intercline signals not being secreted outside of the cell is what sets apart intercline signaling from the other cell signaling mechanisms such as autocrine signaling. In both autocrine and intercrine signaling, the signal influences the cell that produced it. And the final one we're looking at is juxtacrine signaling. This is a type of cell to cell or cell to extracellular matrix signaling in multicellular organisms which requires close contact. There are three types a membrane ligand, such as protein or oligosaccharide, or lipid, and a membrane protein of two adjacent cells interact. A communicating junction, which links the intercellular components of two adjacent cells, which permits, transmit, which, which permits transit of relatively small molecules. And an extracellular matrix glycoprotein and a membrane protein interact. To recap and summarise the types of signalling, the autocrine signalling is where the cell targets itself. The paracrine signalling is where a signalling cell produces a signal for nearby cells. The cell to cell or juxtacrine signalling is where cells are in direct contact with each other. And the endocrine signalling is long distance signalling where the signalling cell produces hormones which enter the bloodstream and have an effect somewhere within the organism. And finally, we'll be having a look at cell surface receptors. So you have the intercellular receptors, which are common types of cell signaling receptors located within the cell, within the cytoplasm. So these are of two types, nuclear or cytoplasmic. Nuclear receptors are special classes of proteins with diverse DNA binding domains, which form a complex of thyroid hormones which either enter the nucleus and regulate the transcription of a gene. In comparison, living gated ion channels these permit hydrophilic ions to pass the plasma membrane. So when a neurotransmitter such as acetylchlorine binds to it, ions cross the membrane and allow the neurofiring to take place. With regards to G-protein cuspid receptors, these receive signals from various routes. So this occurs when a ligand binds to the receptor. This stimulates the G-protein which transmits an entire cascade of enzyme and this then stimulates the secondary messengers, secondary messengers which carry out several functions such as inflammation, growth and sensation. And finally, the final one is tyrosine kinase. So this is a ligand which binds to the receptor tyrosine kinase, resulting in dimerization of the kinase domains. The, ty the tyrosine kinase domains of the dimer then phosphorylate, which permits the intercellular proteins to bind the phosphorylated sites and activate. So, the message that is carried by the cells is passed through a chain of chemical messages within the cells. This can lead to changes in the cells, such as change in the gene activity or the entire process. So, and it, basically an intercell intercellular signal gets converted into an intracellular signal, which stimulates a response. So, I hope you've got to the end of this video and you've really enjoyed it. Feel free to share, comment, uh, like, comment, subscribe and share. Uh, the next video will be released soon and I've got a couple of topics in mind that I want to do but I hope to see you all then. Thank you.